Welcome everybody to Radicalize Truth Survives, episode 93. We are continuing our series, Art is a Weapon. Today, High Fidelity and I are interviewing a playwright and director, Dimitri Plux, whose latest work is Navalny, The Trial, currently on stage at the Swedish Royal Theater. Uh, we're very um, honored that our friend Dimitri Kovigan helped us facilitate this interview. Have a listen. Presentera sig. Ska inte er excellens presentera sig först? Jag kommer att presentera domstolens sammansättning lite senare. Jag heter Navalny, Alexej. Welcome, you guys. Welcome, Dimitri. Welcome, Dimitri. To keep things very simple, we will be uh, rec uh, recognizing our friend Dimitri Kovigan as Kovigan. And thank you so much, Kovigan, for being here to help us facilitate this interview. Um, we're really excited. We are more and more understanding art uh, to be a weapon of war, the ability to tell these stories on screen and on stage is so very important. And can you just uh, give our viewers an idea of how this idea started for you and tell us a bit about Navalny, the trial? Um, it was actually not my idea uh, from the beginning. It was a um, uh, known Swedish journalist uh, called Peter Karl Karlqvist. Uh, who wanted to uh, write, he collects the information about this uh, last trial of, of um, uh, Navalny. He wanted to do from the beginning uh, some kind of um, documentary uh, for the TV, because he's an uh, old TV journalist and producer. Uh, but um, uh, because of the uncertain source of this information, because the official recordings uh, was banned by the judge, uh, wow. it was impossible to, to do it uh, as a docu documentary, you know, for him. Uh, and he thought about to do it like uh, dramatize, like a drama, uh, based on, on, on documents. But uh, and then he contacted me and asked me if I can, uh, as a playwright, basically, if I can look at the material and and try to together with him uh, to write it. Uh, uh, like a manuscript for uh, five or six episodes for for TV, uh, and I said to him that I can look at the material, but I'm not uh, working with TV since 2006, <laughs> uh, and uh, I don't want to go back uh, for different reasons and. Uh, what I can do, I can uh, help him or try together with him to to write a play for the stage, uh, which is my occupation, basically. And we did. Uh, we wrote this uh, play uh, for a couple of years ago. Uh, and um, since that, uh, I I'm <laughs> it's uh, uh, sounds probably a bit strange, but I'm quite occupied person. I have 
a lot to do. <laughs> so I rewrote it and I forgot about it. It was like like uh, like that because I had uh, other things to 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 work with uh, until uh, 16th of uh, February uh, this year uh, when um, Peter called me and, and uh, said to me do you remember our play I said yes I do uh, isn't it time to, to stage it and I thought yes it's probably the exactly right time uh, and uh, but it's um, it's a full format play so it's like uh, uh, bigger than uh, we should never uh, had time to stage this like you know two and a half hours play so I had to um, cut it down or rewrite it to, to another format uh, and, uh, uh, which I did quite uh, uh, simple because it's uh, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a technical stuff. You don't. <laughs> do <laughs> okay. Also, but yes. Yeah. But but it's in in the end it 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 became a one hour play which we uh, staged uh, uh, and the, uh, at the so called small stage uh, of Royal Dramatic Theatre uh, here in Stockholm. Well, thank you so much for that, and thank you also so much for. Uh, speaking to us in English. Uh, I really appreciate it. And I wish I spoke more than German and a little rudimentary Spanish so I could communicate with the world. Uh, um, I'm sorry, is it my English? Uh, it's fabulous. It's quite, quite, quite. It's poor, fabulous. It is not. Because I'm not using it. Your English is much, much better than my Belarusian. So exactly. No, no apologies. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, so yeah. You know, it takes a lot of courage to do art on this subject right now. We understand that so many reporters and playwrights, uh, you know, poets, journalists historically have been, um, you know, have risked their lives doing this uh, type of work. And how important is it to you? How important is art in fighting against fascist dictatorships or at least exposing uh, what dictators are up to? What is the importance of this type of art? I don't think it was uh, a big challenge for me because we are living, still living in quite peaceful uh, society here in Sweden. So it's not that risky uh, for me. Um, I understand that it's a completely different situation for people who are uh, living in Russia uh, yeah. or in Belarus, for instance. Uh, but uh, for me, I'm just doing my job. Uh, and um, I think the culture is the most important thing uh, we basically what i can do as an artist in in during our times so to speak uh, under those conditions uh, or yeah i can only continue uh, to do what i'm always has been doing have been yes. doing sorry uh, um, and um, and it's what i do Yes, I understand. Uh, and I think yes, and I think the culture is uh, is crucial for uh, for us right now because uh, the whole war um, Russia staged uh, against Ukraine, for example, uh, it is a kind of cultural war, and uh, and. Uh, uh, yeah. The whole situation uh, 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 around uh, Russian regime, it's also, for me, it's, uh, it's only now that the Soviet Union 
are dying uh, 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 or is dying I don't know how to no. uh, say it properly. amazing because because I think that uh, for 30 years since uh, 1991 uh, Soviet Union was in like living death you know <laughs> And the, this uh, war against Ukraine is the final battle. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's, uh, we are, what we are seeing, uh, it's uh, the very bloody uh, dying of Soviet Union. Because mm -hmm. it's, it's also a, a cultural war in that sense. Because wow. the old... Uh, um, almost dead culture uh, would very much like to uh, kill the new one uh, and uh, it's also while speaking about Navalny and uh, his figure so to speak so it was obvious for me that uh, he and Mr. Putin uh, are are in the opposite to each other in so many levels, you know, uh, because Navalny was everything what Putin, he had everything Putin doesn't have. A charisma, a sense of humor, uh, a vitality, uh, a, a possibility to change and to learn. And it's uh, all this stuff it's also uh, a details of of this new cultural picture of the future you know uh, because we all know that uh, uh, we don't know how future will develop uh, or what we will get in into in two hours basically uh, sure. But yes, but we know uh, that uh, when we are building something new, we have to include some new elements all the time. When you s try to recreate something uh, which already has died, you have put away everything new. Everything what is new, I mean. So it's... Uh, in that sense, it's the culture is crucial. So one thing I've noticed about, uh, well, really all authoritarians, but specifically Putin, um, <clears throat> these strong men, they wrap themselves in myths and they make themselves appear greater than they actually are. And I think one of the things uh, people do as artists is to use their art to pierce those myths, to destroy the stories around these strong men and show them for what they actually are. How important do you feel it is for artists to do so? I think I understand what you mean. I am not uh, this kind of artist. Um, I think what I am doing, or what we did with this particular play, we just showed how it works. Yeah. And you know, it's enough. Yeah. What's What's so just, brilliant? Just Just to show Just to show how it works. Yeah. It's enough for people who are uh, used to think by themselves, because the absurdity of of this trial uh, speaking uh, for itself. That's just amazing because he's basically stripping that myth by just showing the facts, by just showing the truth, moving people away from the unreality created by the dictators. I, I love that. Um, Dimitri Kovigan, do you have a question you'd like to ask? Thank you, guys. Uh, and um, my question will be like, um, I don't want <laughs> uh, to... to um, do it too early ask my question but my question is uh, how uh, the art can engage americans uh, into this war 
uh, with Soviet Union. And uh, related to this question, next one, uh, uh, do we need to have a new visual language, uh, new mm. narratives? I don't know, um, like a specific approach. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, thank you for the question. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a politician. I don't uh, know how to answer, how to engage people in, in, uh, uh, in one uh, think or another uh, in uh, in that uh, sense so to speak you know it's uh, you know I'm what I'm doing it it's not a political theater for me you know uh, I have no political goals you know my goals are um, uh, artistic goals uh, then it's why I don't like uh, discussions on the stage and so on. You know, I think uh, we have to, as uh, as uh, as artists, we have to show something which people can use to change themselves or to discuss things or to. Um, understand things or to ask themselves uh, questions because yeah. political art in my uh, what I mean by, by political art uh, it's uh, very often the art which likes to uh, deliver the answers uh -huh. I don't I don't want to do that I don't I my job is to raise questions yeah uh, and and when once those questions uh, are raised so to speak uh, it's a audience it's public's uh, uh, job to try to answer them to think about them and in this sense i think the new language or the new um forms is very important of course because but it's important for any art you know you have to develop everything because what what is not developing is degrading you know um, the nature don't like balance it it it, it has to move somewhere uh, is it forward or backward but but it has to move and uh, if you like to move forward you have to try to create something new uh, basically all the time. I I love that because um, what you're basically saying or how I hear it is you are not preaching. You are not no. telling people what to think or feel. You are presenting this story. You're presenting this, this truth. And that is then up to people to take away uh, what, what they're going to take away. And I do love that. I think that is really, for me, the purest form Be of uh, because art. Because it's also, it's also, speaking about this particular play, it's also interesting to see that people who are on the Mr. at the regime side, they also are people. They're not a monsters. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it's very, and it's very interesting uh, to see how it works when people in power knows they that they are doing wrong uh, but they still continue to do so this is uh, one of the uh, questions which were important for me uh, to try to uh, look uh, look at or f focus on that's fascinating to me uh Dmitry Kovigan and I just uh, did a report for Byline Supplement um, on what people can do to apply pressure to help uh, now Vladimir Karamurza and other political prisoners. Because the obvious tragedy in your story is that you, you wrote this story when Navalny was still alive, or you wrote yes. the play when he was still alive. And obviously, when you got the call on February 16th, it was because he had, you know, he was dead. I'm in, I worry that there's not enough being done to try to like 
ensure that we're not writing the next, you know, obituary for somebody like Kara Murza. And do you have ideas on anything people can do to help others, or is it just to continue creating art in the hopes that it resonates with people? It's not enough, probably, to on, only creating art. But what I can do, it's it's as I already told you, <laughs> it's to create art. Uh, but uh, hopefully other people can do something else. I don't really know what uh, should be done, but uh, um, I think it's um, the situation is uh, very uh, complicated because um, I don't think um, we had historically I mean we had something like that before uh, because uh, because the whole or the system which was um, in power uh, in uh, basically half of the world uh, collapsed yeah. for 30 years ago and yes and we don't know how to deal with it because i think it's uh, when when western powers tried to do business with a new russia so to speak uh, it was uh, in the beginning at least it was uh, uh, the honest attempt to to help uh, but no one knew how to deal with it. Our Western uh, uh, specialist on, on Soviet was specialist on Soviet. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> they were specialists on, on this particular uh, communistic dictatorship, you know, mm -hmm. and this dictatorship like disappeared, but not completely and started to leave or build up something else. And now we are uh, fighting uh, with a result of this building, so to speak, you know. Yes. Uh, yeah. But but I don't know if something should be done differently or because the situation is really new uh, in yeah. that sense, because it's never happened before. Yeah. Uh, and the, uh, I think at least. Yeah. No, I, that's so true. Because, I, because, yeah. because the ideological power of, uh, of, of Soviet and its satellites, uh, it was something uh, which we never see right. in previous times. You know, we, we had, of course, different kinds of empires, but it was not built on the ideology uh, in, in, in that sense. Of course, Nazis uh, tried to do so, but uh, but uh, uh, they uh, lose. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Basically. Yeah. Short lived. Uh, Short lived. Uh, yes, it was only uh, <laughs> too long. To, to, to Twelve years or something. Wow. Yeah. God, it's amazing. High fidelity. Not much of an empire, really. Huh. Um, A lot of damage. Yes, yeah, it, was, it was an attempt to build yeah. an empire. Of yeah, course. yes, uh, yes. You say your art is meant to provoke questions. <clears throat> I hope so. One of the questions I have is, given the absurdity of Navalny's trial, uh, given, you know, ostensibly, should Europe and America rise to support Ukraine, Russia will lose. Um, what effect, if any, do you think that Navalny's life and death will have on uh, how politics, how life moves forward? Uh, I think it's uh, what Navalny did. I'm not, I have to say also that I'm not a specialist in Russian uh, internal affairs. 
uh, or politic or something. Uh, I'm not Russian, <laughs> uh, uh, but um, I think so. I don't know really uh, that much about Navalny as a politician, uh, but as a person, I think what he did, he showed us uh, a courage. Uh, to be uh, to be the person to to just to he showed that his words meant something to him and by that he showed us uh, that words still can have uh, an importance because we are living in the world uh, where words, our language, our words, losing importance. We are speaking about different stuff and the answer uh, you can uh, hear uh, here and there, it's like, it's, pro it's probably like that, but it's, it means something else to me. Yes, it, <laughs> it can mean something else to you, but uh, in the same time, uh, we have to understand that some kind of words or definitions, uh, if you like, have um, meaning which is not negotiable. Uh, how to yes. say? It? We cannot we cannot negotiate about this uh, uh, meaning of those words like freedom, uh, like you know. Uh, life and death and, and so on. That's so, 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 so important. Yes. So, so I think he, he just show it as, show, showed us that uh, uh, certain type of the words still has a meaning. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. We, we talk a lot about that because one of our um, Friends is a scholar named Jason Stanley who wrote a book called How Fascism Works. And he's he's now writing about what he calls undermining propaganda, which is taking the words and and trying to drain them of, of their meaning. And it is so important. Uh, everything that you just said is so incredibly important. We are essentially our show very much fights for the meaning of words. And in America, why we are hurting so bad is we do not have a shared narrative of truth anymore. And we need to have that shared narrative of truth in order to be able to clearly see the stakes. I have one more question, but Dimitri, do you, Dimitri Kovigan, do you have another question uh, before I ask mine? Um, no, I just wanna um, say thank you very much, sir. It's, it's amazing. And you're welcome you. to comment on what he just said about words and Navalny too, uh, Kovigan, if you'd like to say anything to um, contribute to that. Yeah, it's uh, one thing that's about meaning of the words. Uh, it's definitely uh, so so uh, deep level of understanding and uh, it's just insight for me and for many of us. But also uh, probably uh, Dmitry, I don't know, keep in mind or not, uh, it's... Uh, do we have a commitment people to to the words, you know, because politicians always they're visionaries and they look on uh, things like, um, okay, we want to build a perfect future and we should do this, this, this. And uh, when uh, time come to action, it's <laughs> they forgot about the uh, ideas, promises or just concepts. And uh, it's like, uh, it's also connected to international po po politics very, uh, very tightly because it's like uh, any kind of uh, voice uh, for support uh, democracy movement abroad, what America did many times, it's just my opinion. <laughs> and uh, like we condemn and everything, but where is the action? Where is the action? Uh, because Putin built a system and other authoritarian regime build a partnership of other crazy regimes and with terrorists, but uh, we should, uh, the democratic country should build a 
another system, system of support for any uh, democratic activists, uh, artists, and uh, journalists, and uh, not only inside the America or Democratic Party, but abroad as well. And that means um, yeah, invest um, something in your words and just don't don't leave it like we support Ukraine. Okay, where support six months without providing ammunition or something like that? You know, just uh, words to uh, follow, uh, actions to yeah. follow in the words. I'm right. sorry to, to, to no, talk. no, no. We're 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 right with we're right there with you. Words think, need to uh, have actions. Yes, Dimitri. I think it's 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 more deep than that. I think it's uh, uh, we are. Um, we are not used to handle, um, it sounds probably too big, but uh, in absence of better word in my head right now, we, we, we cannot handle the evil. You know, uh, we cannot, uh, we are afraid of, uh, uh, of touch it because Wow. It's some kind of uh, some kind of um, um, I don't know why actually, but I think uh, probably because people are feel like if I touch the evil, uh, I will I will be uh, like um, um, it's like a disease, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't, I don't That's have to connect, uh, have a connection with that. Wow. Uh, and I think it's uh, it's quite important to understand that evil and goodness always lives uh, in kind of, um, um, you know, uh, <laughs> battle, but also uh, very tied to each other. Yeah. You know? They're connected. And when you leave, and when you leave the evil alone, and then be surprised that evil organized, you you shouldn't be surprised <laughs> because yeah. because it's what's happened. Yeah. Because yeah. You can't you can't ignore it away. It's you can just, you can you cannot ignore it. It has exactly. to be defeated, and, just like the Nazis in the thirties, like yes, we were talking and, and about then, in the forties, exactly. has to be defeated. Yes, and 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 it's it it's uh, you know I'm always uh, during my whole life I'm I'm quite I'm not that young anymore, uh, but uh, uh, I was a pacifist. You know, I was really against uh, any form of uh, you know. Uh, military aggression yes uh, like I, I i didn't like militaries uh, like occupation uh, you know uh, but uh, i had to um, to admit that uh, nowadays uh, you cannot just saying that it's yeah i cannot do anything because i'm i'm a pacifist uh you have to do something and you have to um to fight i think in different ways of course uh, yeah i'm not i'm not the fighter in, in that sense but i as i told uh, i can try to do what i am doing yes absolutely which is uh why we were so excited you agreed to this interview my last question has to do with something I learned about last year called the Executed Renaissance, where so many Ukrainian writers and artists and poets were purged under Stalin. And I wanted to know if you think there may be a new renaissance coming of writers and poets and artists who are rising to this very important time to tell these very important stories. We just interviewed Sasha Denisova last week and she of course did a play about the hague uh, as seen through the eyes of an orphan she also did a play about her mom and the full-scale invasion because her, her mother in real life refuses to leave kiev and do you see that this could be a moment where there could be a a kind of renaissance uh of of this type of important art uh, 
I don't think that it's about a renaissance of the Ukrainian culture. I think it's about of <clears throat> renaissance of uh, uh, Western interest uh, to Ukrainian culture. Uh, I think uh, the Ukrainian culture uh, uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a big country. You know, uh, it's a it's a rich culture. It's a it's an old culture, uh, but in the West, uh, so West. Uh, you know. Yeah, we know. Yeah. But, <laughs> we but, know. <laughs> yes, but 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 still, uh, in the West, uh, people uh, didn't know about it. Basically, anything. Mm -hmm. What what we did, we we just lived on the under the pressure of the myth of of uh, big Russian culture, you know, mm -hmm. and we thought that uh, uh, every single uh, smaller culture in, in the countries uh, around Russia, it's a kind of extension of Russian culture, you know, it's a kind of Russian backyard. Yeah. Uh, wow. But it doesn't. Uh -huh. uh, it's, it's, it ne it ne it never did. Wow. You know, uh, so 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 I think it's about to 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 just open the Ukrainian culture for yourself. You know, yeah. uh, and unfortunately, we need this big war in order to raise this awareness and this interest. Uh, but now it, uh, I think it, it happens right now. Wow, that's such a great point. I'm so glad I asked. Hi, Fidelity, any final questions? Why do you think truth is such a potent weapon mm. against the evil? I think because evil is is not... The evil is, is not in, in power to create its own values. You know, the evil has to uh, use uh, the values of the goodness uh, because no one, you know, no one Hitler or Putin or someone else uh, saying to his supporter, uh, don't trust me, don't believe me, <laughs> kill me, don't love me. <laughs> and trust, uh, fidelity, uh, it's a values of goodness, yeah. you know, and truth. And it's why we are turning back the understanding of this word to this real meaning. It's why it's a so powerful weapon uh, in, 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 in battle uh, against the evil so to speak wow. uh, you, you have to understand that the evil it's like in uh, yeah but uh, i'm i'm not uh, speaking about uh, um, fairy tales but but I, I think you understand what i mean yes uh, and i think that the values is uh, pr exactly the same but the uh, bad guys so to speak just uh, twist the, the the meaning of these values and when you can show it that truth is not what they meant by truth but it's like that and people can see it and compare it it's 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 very valuable and very um, important thing Thank you so much for that great question and brilliant answer. I so appreciate this interview. Uh, you just made me think about what my friend Ruth ben Giat says. She wrote the book called Strong Men. And she said the truth was the Germans in the 40s were really able to see the truth when the Allied forces started dropping bombs on their heads. And we here are trying to get to the point where we can see a collective truth uh, before the escalation of that. So I appreciate this so much. The play is Navalny, The Trial. It is at the Swedish Royal Theater. 
And uh, let's go ahead and just end on a clip from uh, the play. Först en ordningsfråga. Jag avser att förbjuda inspelningar och fotografering under förhandlingarna. Några invändningar? Åklagarsidan. Tack, Ers Excellens. Inga invändningar. Very, very strange trial that are like uh, uh, very absurd. Навального було все то, чого нет у Путіна. То есть Навальный был харизматичным человеком, обладал чувством юмора. Это был человек, который у которого была способность и меняться и и учиться.